Good morning. In this session, we are going to discuss about rubber, its isolation and vulcanization. At the end of this session, students will be able to explain the isolation and vulcanization of natural rubber. Rubber introduction. Rubber is a high polymer. It has elastic property in excess of 300 percent. The rubber molecules are in coiled condition in unstressed condition. The unstretched rubber is amorphous in nature. When the rubber is stretched, the macromolecules gets partially aligned with respect to one another, thereby, thereby causing crystallization. On releasing the formation stress, the chains gets reverted back to their original coiled state and the material becomes amorphous. This is basically a polymer of an isoprene unit. This is isoprene unit when it undergoes polymerization process, it gives us a polyisoprene that is nothing but our rubber. Processing of latex. This is a flow chart which explains us regarding the processing or extraction of we can say rubber. We will discuss about process in detail. First, on the bark of the tree, the incisions are made and through these incisions, a latex comes out a white milky juice. A latex is nothing but your wild white milky juice which comes out that is collected and it is processed further. First then, latex is diluted, to diluted and filtered to eliminate any dirt present in it. To this acetic acid or formic acid is added. Coagulated soft white mass of the rubber is formed. This acetic acid or formic acid acts as a coagulant over here. The coagulated mass is washed. The coagulum is treated further as follows. We can obtain crepe rubber from this coagulation process. In this, to obtain crepe rubber, the coagulant is allowed to drain for about two hours. Then it is passed through the creeping machines with two rollers and longitudinal grooves upon which water is continuously spread. The spongy coagulum is co converted into a sheet having uneven rough surface resembling the crepe rubber. Crepe rubber. Second, we can obtain a smoked rubber also. The coagulation is carried out in a long tanks about 1 meter wide and 30 centimeter deep having sides with vertical grooves about 4 centimeter apart fitted with metal plates. Diluted latex is poured into this tank with plates removed. Dilute acetic or formic acid is added. This mixture is stirred thoroughly. Then the partition plates are then inserted into the grooves. The tanks are kept undisturbed for about 16 hours. Then the rough slabs of coagulum so formed are removed. The slabs are then passed through a series of smooth rollers with a decreasing gap in between them and water is sprayed on the rollers. The final roller has a clearance of such a design so as to give a ribbed pattern on the final rubber sheets. Ribbed pattern on the surface of rubber sheet exposes a greater surface and this facilitates consequent drying and also prevents the sheet from adhering together on the stacking. The sheets are then hung for about 4 days in a smokehouse in which temperature between 40 to 50 degrees Celsius is maintained. The crude rubber is amber in color and it is translucent also. 
from gatta parcha also we can obtain this rubber it is obtained from mature leaves of dicoxis gatta or pelagium gatta trees it may be recovered by solvent extraction when insoluble resin and gums are separated alternatively the mature leaves are ground carefully treated with water about 76 uh, 70 degrees celsius for half an hour and then poured into cold water when gatta parcha floats on water surface and is removed properties of a gatta parcha at room temperature gatta parcha is horny and tough it softens and becomes tacky at about 100 degrees celsius it is soluble in aliphatic hydrocarbons it is insoluble in aromatic and chlorinated hydrocarbons structurally gatta parcha is a trans polyisoprene and heavier rubber is a cis isomer uses of gatta parcha in the manufacture of a gold cover submarine cables adhesives and even we can form or prepare tissues for surgical pur purposes at this juncture uh, pause this video and answer this question question is rubber is a polymer of a isoprene b isobutyl alcohol c isopentene and d both b and c welcome back the answer for this question is a that is isoprene unit vulcanization of rubber initially we have to discuss about the drawbacks of raw rubber raw rubber is plastic and weak in nature it has a large water absorption capacity it is non resistant to non polar solvents like vegetable and animal oils gasoline benzene etc it gets attacked by oxidizing agent like nitric acid sulfuric acid chromic acid etc it perishes due to oxidation in air it swells in organic solvents and gradually disintegrates it possesses marked tackiness it has a little durability and when stretched to a greater extent it suffers permanent deformation process it is compounded with the rubber is compounded with sulfur or hydrogen sulfide etc the process consists of heating the raw rubber with sulfur at about 100 to 140 degrees celsius the added sulfur combines chemically at the double bonds of different rubber springs the rubber becomes stiffer and prevents the intermolecular movements the extent of stiffness of vulcanized rubber depends on the amount of sulfur added for example the tire rubber may contains 3 to 5% of sulfur but battery case rubber contains as much as 30% of sulfur this is the reaction which explains the same process in this this is these are two springs of or the coils of the rubber in between the sulfur gets added up by opening these unsaturation points and it forms a sulfur cross linkages and this is a vulcanized rubber advantages of vulcanized rubber it has good tensile strength and extensibility it has excellent resilience it possesses low water absorption tendency it has greater resistance to oxidation and abrasion it has much higher resistance to wear and tear it is better electrical insulator also it is resistant to organic solvents it is very easy to form desired articles from this rubber it has low elasticity 
references for this session i have used a textbook of engineering chemistry by jane and jane thank you